Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about Belarus. Belarus is a landlocked country in Eastern Europe with a population of 9.4 million people. It's bordered by Russia to the northeast, Poland to the west, Lithuania and Latvia to the northwest, and Ukraine to the south. Until the 20th century, different states at various times controlled the lands of modern-day Belarus, including the Principality of Polotsk, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The state plays a huge role in today's economy, and 40% of people are employed by state-controlled companies. They make large dump trucks, as well as buses, tractors, industrial equipment, and much more. Agriculture is also very important and accounts for 8.3% of the GDP. Flax and sugar beet are grown in the country. Belarus ranks first in meat and milk production per capita among ex-USSR countries. The main trading partner is Russia, which buys most of its goods and in return provides the country with cheap raw materials, oil and natural gas. It is not surprising then that the deterioration of the economic situation in Russia immediately affected the economy of Belarus. The average salary today is just about $250. Employees of airlines, petrochemical and IT companies enjoy much higher salaries though. Belarus is known for its IT industry. Many popular games were developed in Belarus, like the World of Tanks was developed by the Belarusian studio Wargaming. Surprisingly, there are no labor migrants in the country, so it's the locals' job to clean the streets, plant flowers, and drive the buses and taxis. Due to high inflation, the authorities carried out several denominations in the last 20 years. The last one in 2016. The local currency lost four zeros at once. Today, one Belarusian ruble is equal to 50 cents. Learning that the neighbor in Russia became strict on gambling, Belarus took the opportunity and Russian high rollers are now more than welcome here. Over 40% of the country is forested and it's relatively flat. The weather is similar to that of Poland and Germany. In May you can already enjoy blooming flowers in the cities and especially in the countryside. The countryside in Belarus is amazing. You will pass by bright yellow rapeseed fields, then corn fields and wheat fields. Belarus is the land of white storks. This bird is one of the symbols of the country. A lot of times you can see them on top of power line poles. Unfortunately, about 70% of the radiation from the neighboring Ukraine's 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster entered Belarusian territory and about a fifth of Belarus land, mostly farmland and forests in the southeastern regions, were affected by radiation fallout. Let's take a look at the major cities of Belarus. Minsk. Minsk is the capital of Belarus. The city is incredibly green and well maintained. In case you wonder, it's cleaner than most West European cities. It's a modern city dominated by monumental Stalinist architecture. Many of its major sites, museums, theaters and other cultural attractions line Independence Avenue, a wide 15 km long street leading to vast Independence Square. It's a bike friendly city too. There are numerous parks with fountains. There are many small cozy streets with cafes that resemble Europe. But at the same time, it's the largest industrial center of the country. Tractor plants and automobile plants are located here. The city has a subway consisting of two lines and 29 stations. Gomel is the second largest city. It sits on the Sorge River in the southeast of the country. The 18th century Gomo Palace is now a museum displaying paintings, decorative arts and weaponry. The palace sits in the lush surroundings of the Park Ensemble, along with the classical style cathedral of St. Peter and St. Paul, consecrated in 1824. 
Mogilev is a Belarusian city on the Dnieper River. It's known for its architecture, including the House of Soviets, a Stalin-era building. Pedestrian Lenin Street is home to the 18th century Archbishop's Palace and the Square of Stars. Grodno is a city in western Belarus, near the Polish and Lithuanian border. The old castle is a Renaissance palace on the side of the 11th century fort. Nearby the new castle was built in the 18th century as a royal residence. The city is very beautiful. It feels just like Western Europe. Brest is a cozy, well-kept city in the southwest of Belarus. It stands at the intersection of two rivers. From here it's really close to both Poland and Ukraine. The symbol of the city is the Brest Fortress, a famous place where one of the first battles between the Soviet and German armies took place in the Second World War. Residential areas are very similar to other Eastern European apartment blocks. Wealthy Belarusians choose to live in the suburbs. Many rich Russians buy real estate in Belarus as well. The most expensive apartments are in Minsk, obviously. The average price per square meter in the capital is $1,200 to $1,500. In other regional centers, it's $500 to $600 per square meter. The rate of serious crimes is significantly lower than in the neighboring Russia, Ukraine, and even Latvia and Lithuania. Perhaps it's because of the number of the police officers patrolling the streets, or perhaps it's just a national trait of the people of Belarus. According to the Constitution, Belarus is a democratic state. The reality is, however, somewhat different. The government admits that the Belarusian democracy is significantly different from the Western concept. In 1994, Alexander Lukashenko took power and from that point had won all the elections ever since and he has no plans of resigning or retiring anytime soon. Belarus has shown no intentions to join the European Union so far. Today, the international human rights organization Freedom House classifies Belarus as a non-free country. Western countries have described Belarus under Lukashenko as a dictatorship. Belarus and the US were the only two of the 56 member states of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe to have carried out executions during 2011. Belarusians don't hesitate to introduce modern technologies. German or American, doesn't matter. Whatever works. The roads are actually surprisingly good. The maximum allowed speed is 120 km, which allows you to travel fast throughout the country. Like many other Eastern European countries, Belarus has a negative population growth rate and negative natural growth rate. A lot of people think that's a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing. Seeing some overpopulated cities around the world, I feel like less people is better. In terms of alcohol consumption per capita, Belarus ranks second in the world at 17 liters per year. Agrotourism is just beginning to develop. Belarus definitely has something to offer. Competitive prices, not just competitive, low prices and great scenic views. Many places to go hunting and fishing. Fishing is actually what comes to mind because Belarus is a land of lakes. There are more than 11,000 lakes here. Belovezhka Pusha National Park is one of the last remaining parts of the immense primeval forest that once stretched across the European plain. The forest is home to 800 European bison, Europe's heaviest land animal. Belarus has lots of preserved castles and parks, the most famous of which are Nesvish and Mirsky castles. Foreigners are flabbergasted by how well Belarus looks, by its low prices and friendly people, although many admit that they were initially afraid to visit the country. Let's see what right. foreign tourists have to say. Where do you come from? I'm Steven Sterling from Santa Barbara, California. 
and uh, we've been in the city for a day now. It's fantastic exploring Minsk. It's very nice. Streets are very clean, great condition. The architecture, fantastic. And we've uh, been walking around at the metro. That was a great experience. Saw the Victory Parade. That was great as well. Uh, just had a really good time here, and it impressed us. It's probably the best way to, to put it. But I, I would recommend it for tourism. Prices are not bad. And, no, the amenities are there, so it's everything you need. Tomatoes, mushrooms, and pork are the three most important ingredients of the Belarusian cuisine. Make sure to try some droniki or potato pancakes. Belarus is definitely worth visiting. It's a beautiful country, but unfortunately with a limited amount of freedom. And what do you think about Belarus, guys? Let me know.